Coming to you from that once forgotten artery that pulses through the center of the continental United States and into the heart of the Ozarks, Grace Matthews. Looking in from the northern border, our Canadian friend, along with his countrymen feeling the effects of U.S. political issues, Connor Murphy. Welcome to Dueling Dialogues, episode 202. I'm Connor Murphy here with Grace Matthews in Springfield, Missouri. Hi, Grace. How you doing? Good. We're partying in here like it's 1969. <laughs> uh, I, I think you're talking about the football game, right? Yes, that's the last time the Chiefs <laughs> won the Super Bowl, so that's, that's the big deal. I mean, you know what? It's great. Good. I, as you know, I'm not a huge football fan because my, my son suffered so many injuries for that scholarship. Yes, he did get a fully paid college degree. But sometimes I wonder how much prostitution there is in that. Right, exactly. I mean, he had five surgeries, okay? Yeah. So, I, I just, but I really love this Patrick Mahomes. Right. I mean, this kid, I want to be his mama. <laughs> I mean, he is precious. Yeah. I mean, he he's amazing. But... It is. Everybody's happier. Everybody's talking more when you go out. You know, in the grocery store, people are chatting. It's just cool. It is cool. So we are. We're partying like it's 1969. And, of course, we'll talk a little more about this at the end of the show. Right Stay on. tuned. We're going to have the hammer. Okay. And we know he'll make a production. I hope it's better than Sonny's man. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can... Pre- I can pretty much guess his prediction, though. Yeah, yeah, but he says he'll predict a score. Okay, all right. Okay, so we, we're going to have to um, hope that he's right. I got my fingers crossed. Okay. Okay, but on a sad note, um, last Sunday, former basketball player, Laker basketball player Kobe Bryant and his 13-year-old daughter were killed in a helicopter crash. Um, yeah, pretty sad. It is very sad. I was never a huge Kobe Bryant fan. I, I, I want to say that right off the top. Me neither. But oddly enough, the hammer and I had just had a conversation about him the day before. And Whoa. About how he had changed so much since being accused of rape. But you know, it was just so surreal that, you know, he was he was really living a private life, really focusing on his, coaching his daughters and uh, had four daughters um, and doing so much for his community. Um, he's one of those people that, um, whether he was guilty of rape back in the early 10,000s or not, I, I don't know. I, you know, I wasn't there. No one does. Um, the only people that know are, are him and the, the, the girl. Right. Um, I know he paid her some money, and um, that doesn't necessarily mean he was guilty. We've talked about exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. Sure. Um, but, you know, this is such a sad story. Yeah, there was a couple. His wife and his other daughters. Yeah, there was a couple other young girls in there, I guess, too, with their parents. So, yeah, you know, I kind of hate that they're getting forgotten too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, well, there's a lot of stuff going around on social media with that subject in mind. Is don't forget the other people too. Yeah, yeah. I haven't been on social media too much um, lately, um, so I haven't seen that. But I, I hope so. I hope that people are thinking about the other, the other you know, children, right. but also the other adults. Um, I also think it's fair to note that although this was an experienced pilot, he had not had much experience in fog. Now, I don't know how you could have, because one report said he had like 30 years of firing experience. How do you not have experience in fog? Does it not get foggy in California that much? Yeah, that sounds a little bit odd for sure. But you know what? They don't have humidity like we do. And and, and in our area, I don't know. You guys have a lot of humidity, don't you? Yeah, we fogs are pretty so much a regular really, thing. Really, maybe they don't have fog often. Yeah. So that might be. not be as crazy as it sounds. 
Also, this helicopter built in 1991, that sounded old to me. No, that's fairly new. But it, it was not equipped with some of the, um, oh. the technology that would have said, ooh, there's a mountain in front of you. Sheesh. Okay? So it's kind of strange that someone like Kobe Bryant would have been in an ill-equipped helicopter, helicopter that, you know, he... Um, the priest at um, his Catholic church said that him and his daughter came by before 8 o'clock for communion that morning. I don't know whether they're normally that religious or... Um, I, I mean, I know they they are somewhat. Or did they, was it was one of those deals like, I think we should go by the church. I don't know why, but, you know, people have those feelings before something bad happens. Right. You know? Yeah, that, that would be really creepy if that actually occurred. Maybe they're religious, so who knows? Yeah, yeah. So maybe they always do that, you know? Yeah. Oh, we're busy today, so we'll just come by early and take communion, you know? I don't know. I'm not Catholic, but... Um, and I don't know any Catholics that are that devout anymore. I know a lot of Catholics, but... Um, but that that's kind of eerie. Yeah, it is. Airy and cool at the same time, you know? So, um, you know, bless their souls, bless their families. It's just a really, really um, sad news. I, I almost thought it was fake news. I did, too. When I first saw it, I thought, oh, yeah, that, that yeah, right. Yeah. That so Turned out to be true. Sad. Yes, it did. It did. And another sad note is this coronavirus. Right. And I'll tell you what's most sad about it is that it started in damn China again. And they lie like dogs. So, and in fact, that's insulting dogs. Yeah. So it, I really uh, shouldn't say that. But if they say there's 25,000 people sick, there's probably 25 million. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it, they are so bad. It scares the wad out of everybody. I heard that they're out of masks. Like, yeah. Well, and uh, somebody said even um, <laughs> if you're ordering masks from Amazon in the United States, like it's a week or two delay. Wow. Now, I'm not. I'm not worried enough where I live to be thinking about masks. In fact, I have some masks in the garage for Kate's purposes. As a matter of fact, I saw a picture of uh, some Chinese people with uh, feminine protection uh, stuck to their face. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Well, you know what? <laughs> if it kept you from getting the virus, you that can't Whatever care. works, right? Yeah. <laughs> it, it, is, it, is, it is worrisome because these people got it by eating animals that are not regulated. So this came from an animal. Now, I have heard many reports about what the animal was, so I don't know what the true thing is. I heard it was a monkey. I heard it was a, a some sort of rodent. But, you know, they have these markets, and they'll sell anything for me. You well, know? I heard a different story. I heard that it is a manufactured human virus, and it was patented, as a matter of fact. So, population control in China. Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, it it has sparked a lot of conspiracy theories. Well, you know uh, what? I would call it that. Them. I have not heard that, but it yep. is coming out of China, and most all of them do, don't they? Remember SARS? I mean, exactly this, everything. This is not um, unusual, and we know that China has what a population problem. Yeah, yes. It, it's a little bit. Uh, sketchy but i think all of the flus have come from china since the beginning of time well but has has trump been responsible for all of them or just those <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> are you kidding me the democrats are blaming him for coronavirus yeah that and now they oh, don't wow. like his team that he put together so maybe I, I, it just amazes me what trump can be responsible for mm-hmm if anything no goes wrong, if I drop this glass I'm drinking out of and break it, Trump's I guess fault. it will be his fault. Yeah, exactly. 
He He's nowhere in sight, but I'm talking about him, so it's got to be his fault. Yeah, and they're lining up hoping to fix his booming economy. Yeah, because it's bad. <laughs> it's bad to have a good economy. <laughs> They'll fix How it. I, I know that? they'll fix it. Oh, they will fix it. You yeah. get them right, they'll fix it. <laughs> it's, it's getting totally ridiculous. Yeah. Okay, some other bad news for some people. They are going to change the way they figure your FICO score. Okay. For some people, this will be kind of good. You know who it's going to be bad for? The people on the low end of the FICO score. Of course. Or at least the people that use credit on the low end. Okay? Um, I think FICO scores needed some tweaking. I'm not sure that this is how to do it, but... Okay, say you use your credit cards too much, and you run out a bunch of debts. Okay. And then somebody goes, Hey, I'll give you a loan over here. You can pay off all your credit card debt. And you'll only have to pay $150 a month rather than you're paying the credit card companies $700 a month. I don't right. know. You know. And so you take out this personal loan and you pay your credit cards off. Okay? All right. Now, in the past, that has made your, your score go up because you paid the credit cards off and you just got this brand new personal loan over here. Exactly. Uh-uh. Not anymore. They're going to lower your credit score by 20 to 40 points. Oh. Now, these are people that are probably already hurting. Wow. I think this could have an impact on the economy because these are the same people that don't have the cash if their washer, dryer, dishwasher goes out. They finance it. Yeah. Okay? They're not going to be able to buy that with a low credit score. Huh. Okay? What about the low-end automobiles? I think this could have tremendous impact. Yeah, um, I can see it. And, and it's going to impact probably young people I, more uh, so than older people. Well, a lot of people, uh, when they're buying their first house, roll all of their bills and add a new car into the mix um, just for that simple fact to play, pay all right, that lower off. Lower interest loan. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I could see it hurting a lot of people for sure. Yeah, yeah, so um, watch out for that. Um, if you're a person that lives on credit, you might want to keep that in mind. Keep those credit cards in your pocket. Freeze them in a bowl, okay? Then if you got to use it, you got to think long enough to get it unfrozen out of your freezer. Yeah, so. agreed. Okay, impeachment, impeachment, impeachment. Do you realize it could be over today? Oh, that would be good because I haven't well, I mean, paid it any attention since the beginning because I knew the whole thing was a farce. Well, I, I should say this one won't be over because they'll do another one. They'll find something else. They will start this all over again. However, it looks like, we'll know later today, that they that um, the Senate's going to vote for no witnesses. There's not enough of a story here. All right. Okay? Um. I, I think one thing we have learned, okay, is the president did send Rudy Giuliani over to, I don't know, be his, his man, you know, do some investigating on his political opponent. That is not against the law. No, it is not. Okay? The Bidens do look very, very freaking guilty. Oh, absolutely. They did from and, the I start. Mean, there, there is way enough to to say way enough information. That's just such a lovely sentence, isn't it? Okay, it's Friday. <laughs> There's plenty of information out there that suggests that an investigation into the Bidens is warranted. Okay? Did Joe Biden misuse his vice presidency? You know, I don't know, but it sure looks fishy. Yeah. You know? and, yeah. And no man could be so unlucky as to have that many coincidences surrounding him. Exactly. Okay. We, we know he's guilty. Okay. Should the president have told the world that Rudy was over there, you know, doing his business? No. Probably so. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, you know, everybody does it. Well, uh, I don't think he should have uh, put it out there. 
Well, it, it would have know, been I, be, better behind the scenes because look now. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, he, you know, I don't know. I, I, I probably would have sent somebody besides Rudy. I love Rudy. I love what he did for New York. As a person that goes to New York, I can tell you that New York was never better than under Rudy and, and Michael Bloomberg. Right. And I don't like him all that much, but right. um, I, I do believe that it was. I do believe Rudy drinks too much now. Um, okay. Probably. I, I, I see signs that when he goes on some of these shows and the words out there that he's developed an alcohol problem. I do know that his, his marriage has recently fallen apart. Um, Ouch. I, I think the president could find someone. But you know what? You need somebody down and dirty. Yeah, true. To get stuff done, you know? So, but here's my big question. And, you know, why can't or what? what's the your opinion? Shouldn't the president be able to say to a country that we're handing millions and millions of dollars, hey, could you do this for me? Yeah, I don't see any harm in that. Law, I, I don't see any harm in that whatsoever. You know, and I told you in the beginning and our listeners, it was going to come down to this. That the American people, we don't care. Quid pro quo. Okay, there should be some quid pro quo for the money we're handing out to all these countries. Yeah, absolutely. You do something for me, you know. I got to go to work and do something for a paycheck. Why can't these countries do something we ask them to do? Absolutely. I now, agree. you might say, you know, be nicer to, you know, your people. Be nicer to Christians. And if you're not, we're not going to give you the money. Okay? Right. I don't care what we say. And and they have a choice to do it or not. They don't want the money. Don't do it. Exactly. I agree. Very easy. Yep. Okay. But... This is just so crazy. First of all, you know, I'm, I mean, everybody knows I'm a Republican, and, and, and I try to do my part. You right. know? I'm part of the advisory board, and um, I don't want any paraphernalia in my house. Okay. You know, the calendar, pictures, I like. But I don't want glasses. I don't want Christmas ornaments that say Trump or Bush or anybody else on them. Okay. All right. And we talked about the wrapping paper at Christmas. Exactly. Okay, this is crazier. I get an email several times, actually, wanting me to order my Trump Valentines. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Think they, of a better way to raise money. You know what they're for, though? They're for giving to the people that have Trump derangement syndrome. <laughs> Give them that extra no, little bit of very, love. That's not very St. Valentine-ish. <laughs> Give them that little bit of extra love, that Trump oh, love. No, yeah. it ruins the mood for me. <laughs> Now, I have to insert this right here. Talking about Valentine. Guess what the Hammer and I did last Tuesday? What did you do? We took our first dance class. Oh, no way. Right on. Ballroom dance. Right on. Good. Oh, my gosh. It was so New Yorkish, so fun. And then we're going to this big dance on Valentine's Day at the castle. Cool. At the Pythia Castle. Right on. So that We will have no Trump Valentine's. <laughs> okay. Those, those words just don't belong in the same sentence. Okay, Sorry. Mr. President, you have my vote. Your Valentine's keep up. <laughs> I would Holy still, cow. I'd still love to send a few of those just, <laughs> just to poke the bears. <laughs> well, now here's a depressing situation. Taxing bad stuff works. I guess. Ah, you know, I don't like that. Okay. But, you know, it, we find out it works, but it hasn't really worked on alcohol. Right. Yeah. Okay, but they are telling us that taxing, like, sugar, sugary items like soda and, I guess, donuts or whatever, 
um, actually is working in, in places like San Francisco. I still think they might be lying though. Yeah. Uh, taxing stuff, any stuff is just a bad idea. Like, I, I, well, it is. And it, it, it's taxing someone to create a good behavior seems too socialistic to me. And, and it is. Essentially, maybe, it is. Maybe it's not socialistic so much as communistic. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I could what see. What about it. freedom of choice? Well, that's the thing. That's almost like our marijuana laws here is everything. Uh, it's almost fascist because everything has to run through the government. <laughs> so it, it's. Are, uh, are they taxing the heck out of marijuana there? Oh, yeah. To the point where people aren't buying the legal stuff. <laughs> They're buying the illegal stuff. Absolutely. Which, um, I'm telling you, though, I, I missed a totally, speaking of the marijuana thing, um, I went to the, the big, nice, fancy cosmetic store yesterday. You know, I totally, totally missed the boat. I wish because I was trying to find stocks with that were going to profit from marijuana. Right. They have a whole brand new line of skincare, makeup. Oh, cool. With that is, you know, CBD is what they're calling it now. I'm pretty right. sure. Well, it's just hemp. Yeah, it's hemp, but um, in a whole new way, like I've never seen it. It was very lovely. I didn't buy anything. I was in a kind of a rush, but. I probably will try it. Um, so, okay, so this is back to this taxing issue. So, okay, I'm going to be taxed to death if I go buy some oil or some buds of marijuana to smoke because I've got right. medical issues or whatever. Right. But am I going to be taxed when it's used in something like makeup? Am I going to be taxed if it's put, you know, like Budweiser was thinking of doing something. Um, Coca-Cola was thinking about a hemp or a CBD-based uh, Coca-Cola. Are they going to have to extra tax those items or are they going to exempt those? How did they handle that in, in your part of the world? Good question. Good question. I don't really know. Um, I don't either. Huh. Because it's, it's, you know, unlike liquor... Liquor is used as liquor. Yeah. CBD can be used so many ways. I mean, you you, you know, I used to have a, a skirt that was made out of hemp. Right. It was right. awesome. It yeah, was better I, than linen. I know? think it's just for what you ingest is taxed. I don't think there's an extra tax on, on those things, those items. Which draws um, me to something else. Those items are taxed anyways because we're taxed to death up here in Canada. Well, but here in the United States, let's let's do a comparison here. A few years ago, several years ago, we quit taxing food and medicine. Right. Like prescription medicine, not, not over the counter. Okay? Right. No tax. You go to the grocery store, you buy your groceries, and if you throw in something like paper towels, you might be taxed on that, okay? Okay. So there would be no tax. The past few years, taxes are creeping back in. So they've, they've found a gray area to tax. <laughs> of okay? course. So that makes us, though, different than you guys. We don't tend to tax, supposedly, things we ingest. Outside of alcohol. Yeah, no, we tax everything up here. Everything. Well, now you even tax the carbon in the air or something. Yeah, which is uh, <laughs> a, a tax on a tax because they're already taxing our gas to death and then they tax a tax. Right. <laughs> it's which big. is always, like, like I said, it should, just because we can tax it, should we? Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, uh, our politicians will surely find a way of taxing it. Either way. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Now, we know that our, um, Lori Laughlin is probably going to spend some time in the Slammer Um along with her husband, Massimo. 
Right. Uh, I doubt they skip the sear or so. I yeah. doubt that too. As she's been taking lessons, self defense lessons, preparing for her time in prison. And there are those that say this isn't going to be like the rest of them. They've gotten a month, a day, four months, three weeks, you know. And one guy had six hours in jail. Or oh, something. wow. I mean, oh. Um, her and her husband are very guilty. There's some. There's been some recent emails that even make them more guilty. It, it's just nuts. They're 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 talking about 25 years. Whoa. So anyway, I guess they're sort of getting used to the idea because they just listed their 28 million dollar house because you know they're not going to be needing to um, sleep there. They're going to be sleeping um, elsewhere. Ho. Oh. I had no idea it was going to be something like that. Wow. Yeah, yeah. They are terribly guilty here. And there are emails that were just released. There is just no way. At one point they said, Lori Laughlin told somebody, well, we didn't know. We were giving our money to be used or, or like it was a charitable contribution, right? Right. We didn't really know that that was illegal. And, you know, there are, because people have been building buildings forever for their kids. Right. To get into certain schools. I can almost buy that. Yeah. You know, because she seems a little ditzy, you know. And if you've lived this charmed life, you sort of have ideals about things. Well, I think it happens way more than uh, just these few that got busted. Exactly. And, um, you know, I hate to say it, but these emails, there is, that is not going to fly. And that is not going to fly at all. They are guilty. They knew it. I mean, her husband even had sent her an email saying that he just blew off somewhere I don't, I don't remember. I, I went blank. I'm trying to call up. Our, I'm trying to get our next guest here and <laughs> get the hammer on here. So okay. anyway, he, he was bragging about how he so kindly blew off somebody about this situation uh, when they were questioning about his daughter. You know, gee, oh, I think it was her high school. She went from her high school saying, gee, I don't remember them being rowing. I don't remember them being athletes, and he, um, you know, sent an email blowing him off and then bragged about it to his wife. Yeah, uh, wow, there you go. So. Guilty. Yeah, guilty as charged. And, uh, you know, I, I think they're going to be make them an example because they're, they're tired of it. But what will this do to... You know, colleges in the United States own more assets than probably anybody or anything else. Meaning, they probably have, there's some colleges that may have more money than our damn government does. Oh, wow. I mean, at the end of its balance sheet, okay? Hmm. Um, how is this going to affect them? Because a lot of that money is given with the idea of just maybe that kid will get in school. Okay, yeah. and a lot of buildings. How how is that going to impact? You know, donations for them. Yeah, the yeah, and uh, you know their balance sheets. Yeah, I don't know. Good question. I don't know either. I really don't. But um, okay. You trying to anyway, get them? Okay. Yep, we got it here. Okay. Hello, hello. Is the hammer there? Hey, what's going on? <laughs> Hi, well, we're partying. I've been telling everybody we're partying like it's 1969. <laughs> That's right. Hey, 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 all you Chiefs fans out there. <laughs> so what's the hammer going to tell us about this game and, and my beloved Patrick Mahomes? Well, the hammer's going to tell you like this. Didn't even have to study on this one. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tight game. You always take the best quarterback. Yeah, maybe ever. The score is going to be Chiefs 31, 49ers 4. 4? And you can take that to the bank. 
Did you say four or 24? 31, 24 Chiefs. Oh, 24. Okay. 31, 24 Chiefs. Okay. That's what the hammer's saying, and I let the cat out of the bag that the hammer's been taking dance lessons. Now they don't know if they want to listen to your football guy. Okay? They can't imagine a waltzing football guy. <laughs> Uh, thanks for calling in. Everybody will be happy to hear this. Go Chiefs. Party, party, party. Go Chiefs. Thanks. Okay. All right. The hammer has spoken. 3124. Okay. Okay. We'll see. Yeah, so are you having a party for the game? Or? We are. We are oh, having good. a party. Well, it's mostly family. Our kids, we are doing wedding planning every other Sunday, and so far it's fallen off <laughs> the playoff game and um, Super Bowl. Yeah. My okay. middle son is getting married to his beloved girlfriend of uh, seven years. He's getting married this summer. The next fall, my youngest son's getting married. Oh, wow. Holy smoke. And so um, we are having the first wedding in our backyard. Oh, right on. Good. So it's very cool. So every other Sunday is devoted to wedding planning at this house. Oh, wow. So it just happens to coincide. We will be having Super Bowl and wedding planning. <laughs> right on. <laughs> Sounds good. Because it seems, you know, it works. Yeah, yeah. So good yeah we we don't get the uh commercials you guys get you guys get all those big special yeah. commercials and uh we don't get those. those are they just insert canadian commercials over top of them well, you'll have to get them on youtube i guess uh yeah that's pretty much where people share them from in canada because uh well unless you you're you're streaming a feed or something but uh Anyway, we can agree that it's going to be a good game one way or another. It will be a great game. And uh, we don't always agree, but we can agree on that. And, uh, you know, life's a journey. And Godspeed, Connor. Thanks for listening. Godspeed to all of our guests. Godspeed, Grace, and everyone, thanks for listening.